Welcome back, everybody, to our third episode of Snow Search. I'm meteorologist Joe Martucci at the Press of Atlantic City. Next to me on the other side of your screen, Sean Sublett over at the Richmond Times Dispatch. And Sean, we are really legit now because now we have our own Snow Search logo. It is nice, you know, it's 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 nice to see the snow just kind of gently falling down and kind of get you in the mood as we're getting closer to Christmas all the time. We've had a little spell of cool here or there, but as you were talking, you and I were talking before we started recording, we've had a hard time getting the cold to get in and then staying put to get the storms to kind of line up and everything kind of come together to get a legitimate snow. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a wasted opportunity, uh, mm -hmm. and I use that word loosely, opportunity, because <laughs> some people might not see it that way, but uh, a wasted chance for some snow over uh, the first couple of days of December. But let's first start off by talking about what snow search is. We're really looking in this days 7 to 11 period. In this case, we're talking about the week of December 12th. So this is beyond the seven-day forecast that you see Sean doing or I doing. We're looking into next week, and we're pointing out general trends. We'll point out some days, but we're not going to say, hey, on Monday, snow is going to start between 2 to 5 p.m. It's not one of those kind of videos here. And again, toasted by Sean over at the Richmond Times Dispatch, as well as myself at the Press of Atlantic City. So I want to start off with this map here. This shows December of 2010 and where it ranked uh, across the country. And you see a lot of blue, and that's below average from New Jersey and Pennsylvania down into the Carolinas. In fact, even more below average as you got into Virginia and the Carolinas. And I bring this up because with the pattern that we're seeing so far and what we're seeing right now in early December, we go to our friend Judah Cohen, who we interviewed in our Across the Sky podcast, Sean. And he said that out of past winters, it's really the December of 2010 that's matching up so far to what we're seeing this December. Yeah, when I did the uh, the winter outlook for Virginia, this was the year that I kind of locked into as well, the 2010-2011 uh, the pattern. The sea surface temperatures globally kind of were similar uh, to that time, and that did lead to a, a much colder than average time, not just Virginia, but as you can see there, in most locations east of the Mississippi River, and especially cold in Florida. The one thing that was most different and I, then I pointed this out, and, and I don't know if that it is the cause of why we haven't been substantially cold for a long time yet, but when you look at the sea surface temperatures from, from 2010, it was a lot colder immediately offshore in the Atlantic. You know, the, the western Atlantic here adjacent to the east coast was cooler than it was now. And, and I wonder how much of that kind of ocean atmosphere feedback is playing a role in, into keeping us from being substantially colder than normal. Again, hard to say, but that's one of the things that I noticed that was different. Yeah, and I'm bringing up that global temperature anomaly mm -hmm. map for 2010. You can see those colder temperatures just offshore here, um, you know, and it's really that clash between warm and cold that bring the storms. And just looking at this map, I, I pointed towards really in the north and east. And you see a lot of reds into eastern Canada and into New England. That's above average temps, but below average temps in the mid-Atlantic and into parts of the deep south. And again, that's a clash there. When you get that temperature clash, that's where you get those storms. Yeah, sometimes you hear people who really get into this medium and longer range forecasting talk about the Greenland block, the, the high alta, the high latitude blocks. Uh, and that's what we're seeing there, the, the much warmer than normal uh, conditions in Greenland and eastern Canada signif uh, signifying that that blocking pattern. The whole atmosphere just kind of locked into place and storms aren't just progressing as easily from west to east as as they oftentimes do. And as you and I have talked about ad nauseum, this is very typical of a negative Arctic oscillation and negative North Atlantic oscillation. Yeah, yeah. And let's dive into that uh, Arctic oscillation here. So you see that green line, it's going negative, And then you see the red line and it gets really negative through uh, the beginning of next week. And then we turn positive, but we're so negative, Sean, it's going to take a while. It looks like according to this ensemble member run that we're really going to get into positive territory here. And, and just to show you why that's important, here's an animation of the Arctic Oscillation. So when you're in a positive state of the Arctic Oscillation, which we're not in now, we're not going to be in most likely until about the 20th of the month, 
Well, you have a strong jet stream. That's that river of air about 30,000 feet high that separates warmer and colder air masses. It kind of stays spun tightly like a top, you know, like a spinning top. But when it's a negative Arctic Oscillation, the flow weakens. And just like a top that's starting to lose its speed, starts to really wobble. And that's what we get here in a negative Arctic Oscillation. Now, sometimes we're going to be on the warmer side of it. The jet stream is going to be way to our north. Sometimes a jet stream is to our south, well to our south, and that brings in cold air. And then right along the jet stream is what you can consider to be the storm track. So, Sean, just turn it over to you about uh, the Arctic Oscillation here. Yeah, I mean, when you have those dips to the south in the jet stream, when they're more common, that's uh, that's the negative phase of the Arctic Oscillation. And then you hear us talk about the North Atlantic Oscillation. That's kind of the cousin of uh, the of the AO, which has more of a focus on the eastern coast the, uh, of the United States and into Greenland, thusly the the North Atlantic. But you know we we've had this negative AO and negative NAO now starting to really take shape. But when we look at the medium range guidance, five, 10, 15 days out, it's really having a hard time bringing everything together to produce a legit snowfall. And yeah. for that, we mean, and, and really, when we're talking about this, we're talking about the entire Middle Atlantic from North Carolina to, to New Jersey, because we're looking at, at broader patterns here. But there's just nothing to indicate everything is going to link up enough to do a three, five, six, seven, eight, seven, eight inch storm, a snowstorm anywhere yeah. uh, in those locations uh, to the to the chagrin of, of snow lovers, I'm sure. Good word, the chagrin. <laughs> Look at that, Sean. Sean's, Sean's been practicing his vocabulary here while I've been away the past couple of days. Uh, all right, so let's get into our upper-level pattern. We'll look into more of the day-by-days for next week. We'll start off with Tuesday here um, because we do have a storm system early in the week on Monday, but it's just a couple of showers here. We already know that. We get into the 13th. We have high pressure that's starting to nudge its way our way. You see that cold low over in the Rocky Mountains. We'll put this loop in motion now. And we get you to the 14th. That high pressure and that ridge of upper level high pressure, that thicker atmosphere, which can hold warmer air, is over us on the 14th. And that low pressure system just cuts through the northern plains. And this is a familiar story, Sean. The low pressure system kind of stays to our west. We're on the warmer side of that low pressure system. And as a result, we're talking about being wet, not white. Yeah, this is very typical of what we see in in a La Nina winter. The primary storm track as it goes basically from southwest to northeast, the core of the storm track is along or west of the Appalachian Mountains. And remembering that flow around low pressure is counterclockwise. That drags warm air up the east coast and we get more rain versus snow. But to the, the point you made before about this particular storm, again, we're looking at something that's 15th, 16th ish you know, 10 days out, about eight to 10 days out, uh, there's some indication that storm uh, brings us rain, you know, all of us rain, but it could bring some some severe local storms to the Southern Plains yeah. uh, early next week, like Monday next week. So that's going to be what? That's going to be the 12th. Yeah. Uh, and a broad snow, but snow is not for us. It's going to be on the northern western side of that track, which is going to be, you know, Dakotas and Minnesota, where, you know, they're supposed to get snow. Yeah, that's nothing for them. That's no problem, you know, for them. For us, we want that snow, Sean. You know, I think uh, as a meteorologist, I have no problem saying I'm a snow lover. Of course, I can't be biased in my forecasting, though. If we don't see the snow, we can't tell you it's going to snow. We don't want to lie to you here. Do not Um, want to be accused of wish casting. Correct, wish casting. That That is the word. That that. is the weather word for the week, wish (laughs) casting. Um, Let's just look at another computer model here, Sean. Um, You know, this is the 13th again. Ridge kind of making its way into the area with that warmer air as we go into the 14th. But here, too, that low pressure system pretty much cuts to our west. It snows in Fargo. It snows in Omaha. But for Richmond, Atlantic City, North Carolina, you know, we're not really expecting that much. I mean, in fact, we're expecting nothing in terms of snow here. It will rain. There could be some thunderstorms maybe in the deep south. But, you know, that's about it here. And even as we go forward into the 18th, you know, we're looking for that pattern to kind of stay the same here. So looking at next week's forecast, Sean, the first point I had here was we're going to see two quote unquote storms, one on <laughs> December the 12th, but it's really just some showers. And, you know, for us, there will be some severe weather in the deep south for sure. And then the 15th into the 16th, another 
system, but it's probably going to be rain here, not snow. And then, you know, the last thing we just want to say is, you know, the cooks are in the kitchen. The ingredients are there for cold and snow, mm. but everything needs to line up just right. Yeah, I mean, it's all about the timing at that point, you know, and as I was looking at some of the some of the guidance here, once that particular storm goes by 16th or so, there is going to be another shot of relatively Arctic air or modified Arctic air. The question is, that, is that going to stick around for any length of time? You know, we've had these two or three day spells where it's really cold, but the pattern's been too progressive. One of the things that, that I did start to notice in some of the guidance here is that we begin to see a little bit of a West Coast ridge, uh, the PNA pattern, Pacific North American pattern. And if, if the ridge can establish itself on the West Coast, that also gives us an opportunity to see some cold air coming into the eastern part of North America. So, again, it, it's far too early to give up on snow. We're just not even have even gotten to astronomical winter yet. Right. Um, but uh, don't, don't go itching and looking for it in the next six or eight days because it's probably not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll try for the second half of the month. If mm -hmm. we can get that jet stream to really get to our south, we'll get that cold air funneling in, and then we'll try to wait for that storm to come on through. I have to say, too, Sean, before I wrap up, December of 2010, my all-time favorite snowstorm. <laughs> that was the Boxing Day blizzard of 2010, the day after oh, yes. Christmas. I was a uh, I was at Rutgers uh, back then. I was a meteorology meteorology ugh, meteorology major. There we go. Third time's a charm. Uh, I was a sophomore then. We had 28 inches of snow at my parents' house. Sean, 28 inches of snow. That was a nice one. That that was a big one for sure. And Boxing Day Blizzard was a was a good one. It's a good way to remember it. Yeah, for sure, man. Absolutely, but, I love uh, when it lines up with the uh, with those holidays, even if they're Canadian nice. holidays. It works out nice that way, doesn't it? It sure does. Uh, Sean, take us out as we wrap All right. up. So that's uh, that's the short version. We're the long version for this week. We'll be back next week as we look a little closer toward Christmas Day itself and the opportunity. Maybe next time we'll talk a little bit about white Christmases, where we think that might play out uh, for next time. Uh, but for now, I'm meteorologist Sean Sublet at the Richmond Times-Dispatch. From our weather brother Joe Martucci at the Press of Atlantic City in South Jersey. Thanks for joining us and enjoy your week.